everyone and welcome to my studio, The Pottery Corner, on the south coast of England near Chichester. Uh, we're doing another um, glazed kiln opening. The kiln is down to 32 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's almost cold. I'm just putting my gloves on um, and I'm going to turn off the kiln supply. And I have had a sneaky peek, you know I've had a sneaky peek, uh, into the top layer of the kiln. Right, so there's lots of things in here, as there is usually in the kiln fire openings. Um, and some of it is students' work and some of it is mine. So we'll start off with a student's piece. Um, I have just popped a prop inside of these, which I'll have to just knock out with a hammer. Um, these are just little um, hanging bells that one of the girls has made. She's used one of my um, textured sprigs and that is Chun Plum, which she has just knocked a bit of um, cobalt oxide onto, which you can hardly see on that one. We might see it a bit better on another one. Indeed, there is another one of those. This one has got just a, as I say, I use these props in the kiln, so I'll just knock it and it'll come out. So again, same thing again. You can see the oxide a little easier on that uh, on that rim just to give it a little bit of colour. Not very much colour showing on it, but nonetheless a nice thing. And this is her other colourway. Uh, that one is seaweed over obsidian. That's nice. Goes blue, the seaweed over obsidian. Um, nice, nice glaze combination. And they'll look nice tied on a string. Um, so there's, there's a couple more of those in the bottom of the kiln. Um, this is a thrown bowl of mine in marbled clay. So this marbling is um, raspberry, banana yellow and coral. Um, and I've made a couple of, that was a fragment came off of the um, cookie, which is why I usually wear my glasses. Um, I, a commission from a, a, a person who bought one of my mugs and therefore wanted a cereal bowl to go with it. So actually I made a couple of versions um, because I wanted to give them the choice of what type of or size of cereal bowl. Um, so actually those two nest. So you could almost have a cereal bowl with that one and a noodle bowl with that one. But we shall see, we shall see. But those are quite nice. Um, there are glazed test tiles in here. This isn't one. This is one of Di one of my students, Diane's. Um, that's cobalt. So that's um, Amico Celadon uh, glaze called cobalt, which is a lovely blue and uh, always comes out very well. Now, test tiles. I have done some test tiles of new Mako glazes that I'm trying out. This one is our number 81. Winter wood. Now I know that John Smith, i.e. John the Potter, that we all know from uh, pottery videos, uses winter wood a lot. Now, um, I'm a little underwhelmed. It's matte, which in itself is not a bad thing, but the colour's not come up very well on it. So the, the jury's out on that one. We'll see what we think of it when we use it on a larger piece. Uh, this one is, again, a Mako... This is copper adventurine, and that is two thick coats. I'm, I'm finding personally that the Mako glazes are not coming out as well as the Amico glazes. And um, I find that the Amico glazes come out much truer to the picture on the, on the website. But, you know, I am forever experimenting. This one is called Slate. Um, Again, that's, that'll be three thick coats. Mm, it's okay, that one. Um, I quite like the way that it's on the higher texture, it's, it's changed colour, and on the lower texture, it's turned to green. So, mm, again, jury's out. When you're spending money on glazes, which are obviously expensive, this one's much nicer. What the... Ah, now, that's why. This is the new Amico glaze called June Bug. And um, it's actually, it's very pretty. That's a lovely green, but I haven't got much in the way of crystals. And I wonder whether that's because I've used it on a textured tile, but the green itself is very bright and vivid, almost like an emerald green. I wonder if I were to use another coat on there, 
that would actually bring out a few more crystals. It is, there is a little bit of it on the raised points, but nice, nice shiny green, very nice. Um, it clearly runs a bit, as you can see. I mean, it hasn't damaged the uh, shelf or anything because it, it wasn't sitting on the shelf, but it runs. So watch that one. So that is um, Amico's new glaze called June Bug. Very nice. Uh, this one is number 55, which is Deep Sienna Speckle. Um, I actually used that out of a student's um, pot because I wanted to see what it was like. A bit too much 1970s brown pot potter for me. But I think that it layers quite well under other things. So I might have a go with that. Um, I'll just take some of these cookies out. And for you who have been watching my Top Tip Tuesday videos um, about making cookies, if you haven't seen it, then if you look at my channel, you'll find it. Uh, these are the cookies that I made on the last Top Tip Tuesday. So they're already in, in function. Uh, this is Emma's, one of Emma's um, wall hangings. So she's made a hole in the top to hang this on a wall. Um, I'm not sure what glaze that is. Might be toasted sage. Didn't actually ask her. Might be textured turquoise and something. But I'm afraid I don't know what the glaze combination is on there. But it's nice, whatever it is. Came out nicely, Emma. Uh, this is textured tur turquoise with some sponging of different colours. So that's mainly textured turquoise. Again, Emma, that's come out nicely. This is... Um, uh, a sprig of her dog, her dog's paw, Bentley's paw, um, and unfortunately Bentley is no longer with us, so it's really nice that she's been able to, to make it with his paw sprigs. Any pet owner that loses a pet knows how hard that is. Um, talking about pets, um, I've used this just as a tester because obviously the base was cracked, um, but my daughter and her intended are oh, getting a puppy in a couple of weeks so um, I wanted to just try out the glaze and I've done sort of different glazes on there for them just so they can have a look but I am actually um, making personalised dog bowls although obviously not with a great big crack in the bottom but rather than wasting the piece altogether I thought it was quite useful to uh, to use it for a glaze tester and then they can see if they like the glaze right this one is another Mako glaze this one is called Sheer Blue. So um, it is blue. It's actually, it's quite subtle. It's almost like a sort of a powder, powder blue. It's a nice clear um, glaze, like a Celadon glaze. Quite nice, but slightly uninspiring. I think I would probably use Amico's Ice or Amico's Aqua although they are a little bit more green. This one is blue, so not a bad um, colour, quite like that. Right, now these are Karen's apples, and I'm going to say, Karen, that we might have a bit of a problem with this because I've put props inside to hold the lid up, but the lid has um, adhered itself all down this side. So we'll, we might have to drop... No, we won't have to dremel that off because it's actually come up. So that's useful, she says, catching rather rather cleverly. So actually, no, you just need we'll just need to grind this edge off here. So that's good. Um, but as you can see, I wanted to put them together because they needed to be together when they were in the kiln. So that's a stroke of luck. I thought I was going to be dremeling that one, um, and hopefully we'll have the same with this one in a minute when I fiddle with it a bit more. But actually, the glaze combination on it is lovely. They've come out really nicely. They're darker than the other one that we did. Oh yeah, that one's come off as well. But again, I don't know if you can see um, on this edge here, there's a very nice uh, run of very sharp glaze. So it does need to be dremeled. So I'll, I'll dremel that off before you come. But actually the pot itself is really very pretty. Lovely. And the blues and the greens on the top um, I'm not sure of the combination. I know there was rainforest. I know there was wasabi, but actually it's come out really nicely. And this earthenware clay, which we're firing to stoneware temperature, has actually come out really nicely. It's come out a lovely colour. So props out. While I'm speaking, if you want to keep up with my um, YouTube videos, do subscribe 
um, on the subscribe button and also if you want to get notifications just press the bell and then you'll get notifications when I've done a new video and as I say you know we're doing top tip Tuesday videos every week so I'm hoping to do a demonstration of um, you know some form of pottery related um, tip to uh, pass on so I'm just getting the uh, shelf props out now in the bottom of here it's mostly students there is a little bit of mine I've re-fired um, this pot this uh, mug which I damaged when I took it off of the cookie because it was actually stuck so I've kind of ground it off and whilst it won't be sold in the shop which is a bit of a shame because it is a bit of a stunner oh dear it will have to come become one of my um one of my studio mugs so it's a bit it's a bit damaged on the bottom but you know it's still very usable and it's a gorgeous glaze combination it's probably my favorite so this is Amico's cobalt on the bottom snow on the inside and on the rim and seaweed over and that has now been double glaze fired and when it's double glaze fired it seems to have this sort of lovely drag on it it does drag on the first glaze firing but on the second glaze firing it comes out lovely so as i say it's damaged i can't sell it but it's still a usable mug and a good combination very good combination uh just these last props to remove get rid of those before they drop on anything Leslie this is your other um, uh, the um, she's going to use it with the tea light inside and it, it glows through the cutout through the carving so that's the second one of those very nice that's come out nice Leslie no problem and uh, these, this is one of the little baskets. She's um, making some hot air balloons. So um, when I actually do some of them, you'll see those. This is a mine. This is a thrown little, just a little milk jug um, with snow inside. Uh, there's an underglaze rim of black velvet, black velour underglaze. And then the glaze on the outside is this is um, Mako's Moonscape and it's matte but actually I really like it. I used it on a on a carved vase but actually on this plain surface it's probably come out even nicer. So that's really nice and it has um, black frit in it which is what the black pieces are. But it's a really, really nice glaze, as you can see. And um, I just wanted a, some little milk jugs for the studio, so that's what that is, just a little thrown thing. And I wanted to test the glaze again, so uh, that's come out well. Now, Karen, this is your... Um, um, what's the word? Mushroom top. Oh, he's lovely, actually. I think you mixed some glaze here. This looks like Snapdragon mixed with snow to get this lovely pink. Um, and then uh, snow on the on the spots. So yes, that's very nice. That's come out really nicely. Um, and there's a base upstairs that Karen needs to finish to go with that. We are running out of room. Okay. Um, and that I have done um, fired on props because um, I wanted it to because it had glaze around the base so I needed to right that's another one of Diane's and I'll have to get that out um, prop that's another one of the bells that she's going to put on her piece of string and there's a few more of Diane's cobalt coasters nice very good glaze that um, cobalt there's another one of Leslie's baskets I'm not going to talk about these too much because they don't make any sense without the other pieces um, this is Diane's large sculptural craft crank poppy head so this is an open one that has been made in craft crank clay so it can stay outside um, and this is copper oxide over the top and then just glaze fired up to 12.30 so it's it's frost proof it can stay in the garden all year so she's made a set 
This one she has carved on the outside and where she's carved it and the copper has held in the texture, she's got this lovely line of black from the copper oxide and the petals on the top are very good. That is lovely. Um, we, we make quite a lot of these, the class like them and uh, they look very nice when they're in the garden. Right, there are some more test tiles. When I buy a new glaze, I always do a test tile. Um, this one, she says, having just put something down on her glaze book, this one I pinched from my friend who, um, this is the new Amoco, what's it called? Copper something. I can't remember what it's called. It's the new one with the crystals in it. And in fact, um, whilst I'm talking about that particular glaze, Emma, this is your piece which has that glaze on it with the crystals. Oh my word, very nice. So um, it's quite shiny actually where the crystals are. It looks like it's sort of um, been bronzed almost. I hope you can see that. It's really very nice, lovely surface on it. Um, this is seaweed, I think, here. And um, I'm not sure what the bottom is, but it might well be, um, looks like it's got uh, blue midnight and cobalt on it, I think. Um, but lovely, a hand-built piece with that lovely copper, which is really very nice. So having said that I probably wouldn't buy that, I might now that I've seen it in the flesh. So very nice piece, Emma. You'll be pleased with that when you see it. Um, Emma is, is as obsessed with glazes as I am. So that's the test tile of that glaze. Um, but actually it comes, it's, it's better to see it on a, on a full piece. This is um, just a manganese oxide marbled piece of clay, which I haven't um, glazed. I just wanted to see how it came out when it was fired. And that is the same thing. So it's manganese with just a transparent glaze over the top. So actually it's quite a good way of making your own um, sort of oatmeal-y style um, finish with just using manganese um, marbled into our usual studio clay. So that's quite good. Um, and this last 